got a really good set of basics in what that case structure and obligations of people are. What I'm going to talk to you today is about flowing. And I'm going to hand you out a little packet to start off with, but I don't want anybody to open it yet because there's some pages I can see it right away and not look at right away. So just kind of resist the temptation to open it, okay? You'll have plenty of time for the rest of your life to either look at it or put it on the bottom of a birdcage, whatever you think is appropriate for this material. Okay. Part of what I want to do today is show you some actual examples of flows, talk to you about what you're supposed to be trying to accomplish with that flow and how to do that. Okay? And so starting off at the beginning, let's uh oops, I can't use this, I have untied the keyboard here. When you flow, you should do it on eight and a half by eleven paper would be my suggestion because you're going to use a lot of it and the larger the paper the more you waste. But you kind of need a minimum size of eight and a half by eleven. And you should draw columns down that eight and a half by eleven piece of paper corresponding to the six speeches you all learned about last hour. Okay? Prime Minister, Leader of Opposition, etc., etc. And what you want to remember is you'll start, obviously, with the Prime Minister's speech and you'll start going down the first column. But once you run out of space on that, you need to go to a second sheet of paper. You do not go to the top. It has to be all the way down, okay? And furthermore, there are different types of arguments that need their own separate piece of paper. Now, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by this real quick here. So used to using that, that's messed up. But before I show you that, I want you to remember these three guidelines. First off, your key to being able, okay, to get this stuff down is abbreviation. You are not a court stenographer, okay? You have got to focus on using abbreviations. Now, some of you may be a little daunted by the task that, like, whoa, this is so much, and they're talking so fast, and how do I get it all down? The good news is, with the patterns that Sasan was telling you, the argument templates, a lot of the arguments are going to be in the same form, debate to debate to debate. So for example, if you go to an advantage, you're going to have uniqueness as the A point, B is the link, C is the internal links, and D is the impacts. So if you kind of know that's coming, you work out a series of abbreviations, or literally maybe U for uniqueness, P for, or L for link, IL for internal link, MPX for impacts. Okay, so you'll kind of know a lot of it automatically. You maybe even just leave spaces and don't write that stuff down. Okay? So abbreviations are key. And I'm going to give you some examples of abbreviations and they're in your path there. Two, plenty of paper, showing up at a tournament with no paper, and oh, I thought you were going to bring the paper, and then that's always awkward. And then fast writing pens, probably two colors. Uh, I suggest using uh, pen tells, but anything that goes fast, don't flow in pencil. That's just not quick enough for you. Okay? So, take a look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, you're going to see better pictures of this, but I wanted to show you that. This represents the prime minister flow of a debate that took place a couple weeks ago on our campus to orient our novices. This first sheet of paper dealt with the resolutional analysis. This sheet was the advantages because it spilled over on the page two. This sheet was advantage two because it spilled over on the page two. This was a sheet for disadvantages, and this was the sheet he used to summarize his prime minister rebuttal. So that is seven pieces of paper for one debate. And you may be sitting there going, my God, no wonder we're ruining the planet and killing off all these trees and debate is the biggest drain on the environment. Take a deep breath, you can use sugar cane sugar if you want. Sugar cane paper, that reduces the impact. Impacts are important, right? Sugar cane paper. Sugar cane paper, yeah. One of my debaters said we need to use sugar cane paper. Wait, what is sugar cane paper? I'm not sure. I need to Google it. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's paper made from sugar cane that's better on the environment. Oh, okay. So we'll try that. Okay, let's um let's get a little bit of a, a of a closer picture in here. This is page one of the flow, okay? So 
This is the Prime Minister flow on page one. You'll notice he's got resolutional analysis at the very top. Observation of that is the type of resolution, the definition is contextual, the judging criteria that benefits, and observation to the plan. Okay? So if you take a look at that, you take a look at that up here, all this information is basically written in shorthand. So he's got the resolution at the top, United States federal government should raise the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour. So that's what this person is debating about. The United States federal government should raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. He starts off with a resolutional analysis, okay, is observation one, and it's the type of resolution. So you all know about the different types of resolution, right? Is that a yes? If you don't, look, this is a novice class. If you don't, don't sit there on your hands because there's probably three or four other people that are going, God, I wish somebody else could ask a question. Does everybody know what that refers to? Yeah. No. Okay. So you're going to have three types of resolution that are going to get thrown out at you. The first, and by far the most common, is called policy. And that has the presence of an active verb, an action being done. The United States should suspend drone strikes. The United States should raise the minimum wage. The United States federal government should end capital punishment. So something actively is being done. Okay? And it's important for you to tell the judge, once I to tell the judge what type of resolution it is. Yeah, question? Oh, I was just saying like so it's affirmative. Yeah, the first affirmative should tell everybody in the resolutional analysis at the very beginning of the debate. This is a policy round because of the presence of the active verb. And the reason you want to tell them is there are different burdens for the affirmative team depending on whether it is fact, value, or policy. As I said, most of your resolutions are going to be policy as marked by an active verb. Okay? The other two are fact and value. Fact resolution is that can be empirically proven and value is that it's subjective and can't be. Yeah? So like, um, do we do the same thing? Must we still specify what type of debate it is? I'm sorry? Um, in LD, do we yeah. still let them know that it's a policy? No, no, no. It, it, you, I mean, you might want to just say that, but I wouldn't spend much time on it. Yeah. yeah. So the point is, I'm trying to teach you guys how to flow, but as you learn more as what this jargon is, you can abbreviate and you can understand it, and it's going to go much, much more quickly. So for example, if you're sitting there in a round, and let's say you're the negative, it's your very first round, and the affirmative gets up there and goes, thank you for being here, let's debate. The affirmative will support the resolution, the United States federal government should raise the minimum wage by $15 per hour. Observation one is resolution analysis. The A point is, it's a policy round because of the presence of an active verb. Now, I've said a lot of stuff in that 15 seconds. But all you really need to put down is, because you've already gotten the resolution, just put policy. And that way you know that nothing squirrely is going to go on and that it's a straight up policy as is grammatically indicated by the resolution. Okay? Then your B point under there is definitions. In this case, it's contextually defined. And you can just put CD for that. And then your uh, judging criteria, a weighing mechanism, net benefits. You just put NB for net benefits. So even though he said hundreds of words, you've only got a couple of words you need to actually write down. Okay? And then you've got the plan text. Okay? And usually the plan text is going to have an agent. You want to make sure you write down who are they having to do this. A mandate, something they're doing. Funding and enforcement. So you put a little dollar sign or a capital E. You just want to be able to abbreviate those things, okay? So this is literally, on his flow, all he had written down. And this was written down ahead of time. But frankly, this is all you likely would have had if you were the LOR, okay? Any questions on that? Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of walk you through this guy's flow, and then I'm going to give you turn you loose in the, uh, in the hand out here and, and, and concretize some of this stuff, okay? So, I 
keep wanting to push my button, it doesn't do anything. Okay, these are the second and third pages of what his flow would look like. This is a continuation down here. This is a lot more detailed, okay? But it's the same stuff you were hearing from Sasan last lecture. It's basically advantage number one. Now in this case, because it's the prime minister, all this stuff at top got scratched. This is something he was doing in prep, and he decided not to do that. So he then went to number one, advantage one, and he stopped that right there. Okay. So uniqueness, link, internal links and impacts. And you got a good idea last hour as to what those look like. But that's what you want to do there. You want to make sure you write down the structure, the A, the B, the C, and the D, because number one, judges like that, and number two, it'll help you from getting lost. Okay? Any questions on that? Okay. So these are his pages four and five. It's the same thing, it's just advantage two. Okay? And so again, his impacts are down here. He doesn't even bother to put the A, B, C, and D, but I listened to this debate and he said them so that everybody could follow them. And you'll notice he's got a lot of arrows up here and other word things, equal signs, zero with a line through it. So part of what you need to do is develop an abbreviation system. Only needs to be interpreted by you. You have to have a Rosetta Stone as to a key so that you know what it means, okay? But your coach doesn't really need to be to read it. Your partner doesn't really need to. You need to be able to translate it, okay? Now, here's page six. You'll notice this is in a different color ink because he's flowing what the leader of opposition said was the disadvantage. And I do recommend that you have like a black and a red. I mean, he uses blue and black, whatever, but two colors to distinguish which side is arguing. Okay? And what he's got here is the structure of the disadvantage. So basically at the top, it says DA jobs, okay? And then he's got the uniqueness, internal link, links, impacts, all right there. There's link, there's the impacts. And he uses really brief descriptors so that he's not filling in every word. Again, you are not a court transcriber. You're not a court stenographer. Okay? Now, this is his page seven. Because he's the prime minister, he gives the last rebuttal in the debate. What he wanted to do is to condense the key points he was going to make, which was poverty on advantage two, how we solve S in a circle, how we solve for the disadvantage, which was jobs, and then bring back the increased economy on advantage one. So he wanted to crystallize the issues to the judge. He wrote that stuff down in preparation of the speech. Okay? He also started off his speech and he wrote out his little introduction at the beginning. He says, Judge, we're the only team with a solution to increase poverty. And because poverty has impacts in terms of dehumanization and death, that's a big thing to tell the judge. We are the only team with a solution to increase poverty. It's basically telling the judge, you've got to vote for one of the two of us. We're the only ones that are going to be saving lives. We're the only ones that are going to be reducing dehumanization. You need to vote here now. And then he tells you why as he flushes it out. Okay? We're going to do an exercise um, that gives you a chance to flow, and I'm also about to turn you loose in the little packet here, but I just want to finish right up here. So this mess is one of my flows. By the way, this flow was the one you saw pictures of. It was by a student of mine from last year who went to Berkeley. Uh, or he was with me last year, but then he went to Berkeley for the last calendar year. Um, and he actually won the National Parliamentary Tournament of Excellence National Championship. This is the very first flow he took after that round in March because he came by our class and did a demo to help us out. Anybody want to touch Henry's flow? Okay, touch your flow. This is the first flow. 
You can touch it. You can touch it. Okay. It's kind of like papal robes here. Okay. Very good. Everybody want to touch it? See, this is this is putting national championship into your face. It your is hands. the date skills transfer. Yes, they transfer. This is a Harry Potter spell thing. Everybody needs to touch paper. Unless you don't want to be good. I mean, that's fine too. Okay. And there we go. Everybody's touched it. Oh, yeah. His name is Henry. I actually called him yesterday. I said, hey, Henry, can I kind of use that flow from your baby? He goes, oh, absolutely. Tell everybody I said hi. Have a great time. So that's Henry Tolshard from Berkeley. So this, you notice how different this looks? This is one of my flows. Henry was debating here. So he had better things to do than to write down literally everything. And plus, he wasn't evaluating the debate. He was trying to win the debate. So a judge's flow is going to look a lot different than you as the competitor's flow. I literally am just sitting there. I don't have to come up with arguments. I just need to make a decision based on a comprehensive reflection of what was said. And so major difference here between what a judge is going to take down and what you need to take down. Okay? So this little slide here is very, very important. Because while we talked about it, right now you can um, turn to the, uh, the the last page. Go to the last page of your handout. Flip it open. Flip it right back. Just turn it over. On the back side. Okay. Do you see this? This kind of depicts what I showed you earlier. You've got those columns. Each set separate piece of paper is going to be either the case stuff, like resolution analysis and plan, an advantage or off-case stuff, that things that the negative, the opposition is going to bring up. And so, who all has done laundry in here? Okay, You know that you got your darks, right, and your lights, and you got your dark delicates and your light delicates, right? You don't wash that stuff together. You have four separate laundry baskets. Well, think of it the same way when you're flowing a debate. You have separate laundry baskets for different types of arguments. And if you don't put them in separate laundry baskets, they're going to blend together and mess up. So as the debate progresses, this topicality argument, that may get dropped and thrown away. So you just toss that piece of paper. This disadvantage, it may be turned, so you really can't drop it. There's offense on it. And the counter plan, you want to stick to it because you think that's a better way to solve. So these two pieces will stay, and maybe this advantage hangs on and the case hangs on. So you are going to order, like you do shuffling cars, the sheets of your flow depending upon the announced roadmap order of the speakers. Does what I said make sense or no? Okay, so in other words, the prime minister gives no roadmap. He just goes and says, hey, here's my plan, here's my advantage, aren't we great? The leader of opposition will get up and say, hey, I have three off-case positions. And then you'll start debating. My first off-case position, take out a separate piece of paper, is topicality. My second off-case position is disadvantage, a unique reason as to why not voting affirmative. My third off-case position is a counterplan. It is uniquely bad to do their plan because they link to the disadvantage and our counterplan doesn't. And yet we still solve their harm, so it's hell of a good idea to let us win. Okay? And then you've got these separate pieces of paper too. Yeah. What is the topicality? What is what would they be? What would the negative be talking about? Here's an example of a topicality. Let's say the resolution is resolved the United States should abolish the death penalty. Okay. What do you think I'm abolishing? Can you repeat that? Yeah, the United States federal government should abolish the death penalty. What do you think I'm getting rid of? What do you think I'm getting rid of? The question is, what do you think, as a common American, what would you think I meant when I said that? What's the plain meaning of that statement? The death penalty. The death penalty. What do you think the death penalty is? The capital punishment. Right, exactly. Capital punishment, right? So if I say to most Americans, the United States should abolish the death penalty, they think, okay, get rid of capital punishment. But if the affirmative decides death penalty, and they interpret it as the estate tax, that penalty that attaches upon death when they disgorge assets from the decedent and they abolish the estate tax and you're sitting there having spent 20 minutes prep on capital punishment? Are you going to run a topicality saying they didn't meet their burden of a reasonable interpretation of the definition? Yeah, 
that's what you're going to do. Oh, okay. And so that would be an example of a top Okay. And there's certain standards and structures to do that. I don't think you've been exposed to that. So don't get lost by the fact that it has an A, B, C, and D under it. For right now, just know, oh, that's a separate off-case position. I need a separate piece of paper. Okay? Yes? Is on and off case like synonymous with the terms neg and F? Or they're For this purpose, yes. All of the on case stuff will be the things uttered by the government team coming out of that first speech. They will be things like resolutional analysis, maybe a separate observation for background, plan, then you'll have advantages. Now sometimes they'll put solvency under plan, sometimes they won't. On solvency at all, they'll they'll blend it into the advantage. Okay, and so if you want to put solvency under plan, that's okay. But usually, advantages you want a separate piece of paper because you saw how long Henry's advantage was. That was two pages. Okay, and remember, you've got to keep it in columns. All the way down, column one is the first piece, and then on the second piece of paper, all the way down, column one and the second piece, and God forbid, the third piece. Okay. So does that make sense? Okay. So the on and off case arguments. Basically, you have a pile of papers for on case and a pile of papers for off case. Okay. And if you can just keep this straight and then listen to the roadmaps because the debaters are going to mix stuff up. You may, for example, have the prime minister just gives the gives the case. Then the leader of opposition gets up and goes, okay, I've got three off-case arguments. He won't say what they are. He'll just say, so take out three pieces of paper. And then the third debater, the member of government, will go, okay, judge, here's my order. I'm going to take the topicality first, then the counter plan, then the disadvantage one, then I'm going on case in order. And so you can shuffle all those pieces of paper so literally as he goes, you're able to just flip them like a book. Yeah? All right, so if... On case sheets, yep. when we have the positive affirmative arguments, why do we need all six columns? Because there could potentially be six cop six responses. Okay? So in other words, when you look at that last last piece of paper on the on your packet, okay, that first column is for the prime minister. Well the leader of opposition is going to say something. That's in the second column. Well, if the argument is still alive, the member of government is going to say something. And then the member of opposition is going to say something. So you theoretically can have stuff that goes all the way across. If arguments get dropped or conceded, the column will stop. Okay. So for example, on resolutional analysis, you may have the negative get up and go, we agree. Go straight to disadvantages. OK, that means you just don't put anything there because it's all agreed to. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, now, I want you to turn to page six in the flow, I mean in the packet, okay? Page six gives you, so you don't have to spend time writing it down, page six gives you these points, okay? These are the functions of a flow. It reinforces to you why you need to bother doing this. It's a memory aid, it aids organization, it reveals opponent's weaknesses because like a picture of a car with only two tires, you know something is missing. When you're looking at a flow of your opponent's argument, you're going to see, for example, if you're supposed to have a link and an impact, and they don't have a link and an impact, and you're looking at the flow, that's a clue to you that there's a defect in that argument, right? Just like the car with two wheels. You know something's missing when you see a car picture that's only got two wheels. And so, again, I don't need you to spend a lot of time writing it down. That's why I wanted to write it down for you. So does anybody have any questions on that? You can basically illuminate positions as you get used to what goes in those templates. Okay? You know it's supposed to be in a topicality. You know it's supposed to be in a disadvantage. You know it's supposed to be in a plan. And if it's not there, like the picture of the car with two wheels, something's missing, you go straight for the judgment, like the little vampires you all are, right? Absolutely. Okay. It's also an excellent post-round tool for analysis. So when your judge, go, when your coach goes, so how, how did it go? What did you learn? You go, well, I learned that I shouldn't drop topicality when I'm on the affirmative because that means we lose the debate because we didn't have any responses to it. And the 
coach will go, well, what was the topicality? Well, here's the flow. I, I did the best I could, but I just forgot and didn't get to it. Okay, well, let's go over their topicality, redo the speech as if it were Saturday, and let's learn from it. That's what should be going on. Not, oh, you idiot, how did you drop topicality? That's, that's not the way to go. You need to learn from it, okay? That's the key. All right? Now, ta-da! A good flow is like a good horse. You can ride it to victory. I can see you're underwhelmed. Well, there's a reason I'm talking about horses here, and that keys into the next seven. This is the old Magnificent Seven, not the one that came out a couple years ago. New one, right? Yeah, this, this one came out in 12 BC when I was a freshman. And so this was like really old. All these people have got to be dead by now because they were hella old when I was watching it, okay? So a rider needs what for the best ride? Well, you have the acronym. Saddles, yay! And there is a little acronym there. And here it is, it is written out so you don't have to waste time doing it. Saddles acronym is written out right on page six, okay? This, again, is key. It's going to enable us, with the limited time I have with you today, to get to the exercise, which is why I didn't want you looking in there. Uh, I'm going to get to the exercise, and I'm going to give you a chance to flow, okay? So essentially, you want side-by-side -side arguments, okay? Because that way you can trace literally, linearly, linearly, progressively throughout the round, uh, each response, or absence of a response, too. Okay? You also have the abbreviated arguments. Dropped arguments can be highlighted with like a big circle. Okay? Divide papers into on and off case sheets so you can rearrange your speech in order like a deck of cards. Legible writing, for God's sakes, if you can't read your own writing, you've got a rule of hurt. Enumerated points with signposts, Roman numeral, uppercase, Arabic, lowercase, Really, really pay attention to signposts. I will tell you that right now, judges will get freaky, freaky, and generous with speaker points when they hear you being super organized. And studies have shown that when someone sees somebody they sense is organized, they attribute more intelligence to them. So you want to be able to do that. Okay? And obviously, you need to make spaces there for the opponent to make an argument. Now, remember with Henry's flowchart, some of these were pretty tight. Okay? Because this is what he flowed during preparation. He was the prime minister, so he wanted to know exactly what his argument was going to be. But when you get, for example, to the disadvantage, okay, here, he leaves gaps and spaces so that the response can be listed. So you can't have everything single space because if you have four lines of response and you're already bleeding over to the next argument, that's problematic. Okay. Page seven of your handout shows you what I'm talking about. Here are advantage one, advantage two, and resolutional analysis in the first column. Okay, And then here are topicality, disadvantage, and counterplan in the next. So this depicts six separate pieces of paper you would have if it were a two advantage case and the off case positions were topicality, disadvantage, and counterplan. All right? So, what I want to do now is give you a chance to flow. And because I want you to be able to go back and check your work, because we may not have time to do it all, this is why I didn't want you to look in here. You see, there's a reason for my madness. On pages three, don't look there, but on pages three to five, I'm going to give you a transcript. There is a transcript, it's already in your hands, of what I'm going to read to you. And that way, afterwards, it's only going to be about three minutes of reading, four minutes of reading. You can go back and check what it should have looked like. Okay? Yeah, question? I saw a hand go up, I thought. Anybody? Okay, so what I'm going to do is, again, read and let you try to flow. So everybody should take out a piece of paper. Okay? And we're going to try and flow straight down. Remember our little rules here. In fact, you should probably have two pieces of paper. So I'm going to give you resolutional analysis and then an advantage. Okay? So you should have two pieces of paper up. This is only coming from like one side though, so you're like the prime minister. I'm going to be the prime minister. Good question. Yeah, I'm only the prime minister. This is the very beginning of the debate. Okay? Resolutional analysis and then yeah, you know, I'm going to give you like resolution analysis and a plan, oh, okay. and then I'm going to give you an advantage. So you're going to want to have two pieces of paper. 
And I also want you to try to put it in a very small column. Because remember, if it were a flow, you'd be wanting this column to allow the leader of opposition to give a response. Okay? So you're going to kind of go down like that. Everything you flow is going to be like this. Well, you can move it over because there's nobody following it. But try to see if you can get it like this. And you should have to be space. A little bit of space, yeah, okay. just to get for the response, okay? Do you use front and back to each page? No, 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 I don't. Yeah, just use the front. Just use the front. And, and by the way, just to tell you, if, if you're thinking to yourself, wow, I'm going to save the environment and I'm going to use the backs of my flows for the next second and third round, that's a rules violation. You are not allowed to bring into a round anything other than what was prepared by your hand during the 20 minute prep for that topic. Does everybody hear that? That's the, you can, there was a team at State last year that, uh, or two years ago, was disqualified for the round because they brought a dictionary in and read it. That's prepared materials. So you're not allowed those in part of it. Wait, Lord, what, what happened? You said something about using the backside, and you said you can't. Don't do that, because that would be you bringing in written material prepared outside, oh, I mean yeah, outside of the 20 minutes prep. But if you were to, Right on the flow and do both sides of the paper. Is that that's a bad idea too? But not, you, it's not illegal. It's just a bad yeah, idea. yeah, a bad okay. idea. Yeah. Okay, so we ready? All right, here we go. I'm going to read you the first affirmative speaker. By the way, I'm actually putting in here some explanations that you can read at your leisure. I'm not going to literally read everything here because that's not what a speaker would do. But if you're sitting there going, oh. Well, I don't understand this resolution stuff. He went through that too fast. Here's the good news. I'm going to be reading the highlighted stuff, okay? And you are going to then get explanations for, oh, active verb means policy. Or, oh, empirically verifiable, that means fact, okay? So I'm trying to cram a bunch into 45 minutes with you. All right, so here we go. This is what a prime minister's speech would look like. Okay, so thanks for being here. Let's debate. The government team will support the resolution that the death penalty should be abolished by states and the United States federal government. Again, the government team will support the resolution that the death penalty should be abolished by states and the United States federal government. Observation one is the resolutional analysis. Subpoint A, resolution type. This is a policy round because of the presence of the active verb should be abolished. Subpoint B, definitions. All terms are contextually defined. Subpoint C, decision mechanism. Today's debate should be evaluated through all inclusive net benefits. The team that demonstrates their advocacy produces the greatest net benefits should win the round. The weighing mechanisms gives both sides access to the most ground. Observation two, background. Today, 3,125 inmates are on death row at a cost of tens of millions of dollars. Over 1,000 people have been executed. I'm sorry. Have been given the death penalty, check your packets, since 1976. Columbia law professor James Liebman found that one in 20 death row inmates were found not guilty. However, sometimes appeals don't act in time, and evidence has shown that 15 prisoners killed since the 1970s have most likely been innocent. So wrongful <coughs> executions have occurred and are obviously not reversible. Plan. Therefore, the government proposes the following plan. Subpoint A, agency. Since the resolution authorizes the death penalty be abolished in the United States, the plan's agent shall be all state and federal governments. Subpoint B, mandates. All state legislatures and federal government shall immediately declare the death penalty illegal. All state legislators and the federal government shall immediately declare the death penalty illegal, and all existing death sentences will be converted to life without the possibility of parole. All existing death sentences will be converted to life without the possibility of parole. Subpoint C, funding. This plan requires no funding. In fact, it will save money through elimination of layers of court appeals unique to death penalty. Subpoint D, enforcement. Plan will be enforced through the executive and judicial branches of state and federal government. Enforcement through state and federal 
executive and judicial branches of government. Addendum E, subpoint E. All existing death penalty statutes will be declared void. All existing death penalty statutes will be declared void. That's addendum E. So, our plan produces one advantage today. We save lives and money. So, lives and money is advantage number one. This should be a separate piece of paper. Subpoint A is the uniqueness. Right now, enforcing the death penalty at the federal and state level wastes millions of dollars, clogs the courts, and wrongfully facilitates execution. Subpoint B is the link. Plan passes, outlawing the death penalty, and replacing convicted life sentences without parole. Plan passes, replaces death penalties with life without the possibility of parole. Subpoint C is the internal links. There are two points under here. Number one, ending the death penalty means no more costly layered appeals because there's no more death penalty. And subpoint two, ending the death penalty means all executions stop, including wrongful executions. No death penalty, no execution, therefore no wrongful execution. And subpoint D is the impact. Under this plan, there are two independent impacts which justify the plan. Number one, plan saves millions of dollars because we save all that money. Two, plan saves innocent lives because nobody's executed. For all these reasons, we urge a government value. Okay, now, you have, if you now can look there if you like, what I just read is on pages three, four, and five, okay? And I believe, yeah, what, what Ryan did is he's highlighted in gray what I actually read you. All of the other stuff gives you a further explanation so that you can understand more fully what is going on with what I just said. The other thing that I do is, again, I had to modify this a little bit today because of our time crunch. You will notice that the first uh, two pages actually kind of walk you through the importance of flowing, the need for different people to have different types of flows, but I think you have the basics now. You need pens that write quickly. You need paper. You need an abbreviation system, and you need practice. You might try practice flowing the news at night, okay? You might try going on YouTube and practicing flowing some of those debates, although be careful if you get super fast in PDA rounds, um, that may be more discouraging than helpful. You just want to get used to the fact of picking up those keywords, and as you learn more about world issues, you're going to figure out the abbreviation system, you're going to figure out how they relate. Okay, so for example, if I were to say your address, your birthday, your siblings, and your favorite foods, and you typed all that out for me, and then I read it super fast, if I read it super fast, you'd probably be able to take shorthand notes on what you know, right, because you wrote it. It's the same thing with these topics. As you get more familiar with the subject, you're going to be able to have shorthand versions that enable you to replicate the arguments throughout the debate. Any questions? The more you, the more you get down this information and learn about it, the more, the better you'll be able to abbreviate, basically. Exactly, because for example, you may have, you, you know, United States Supreme Court, it would take you way too long to write that down. You may just write SD, or U.S. President Donald Trump, you just put T. Mm -hmm. I mean, so if you can really abbreviate, you get the gist of what is being said, enabling you to replicate it during your speech and make responses to it during their speech. Mm -hmm. And then again, remember, the debate lasts 40 minutes. Prime Minister says something in the first five minutes of the debate. How are you during the LOR rebuttal going to look back and have an accurate record unless it's down there and you understand it? You won't. That's why the flowing is so important. Yes? So it's going to be pretty fast in the actual debate. It's not going to be slow like this, I um, as you, if, I'm assuming all of you are here a novice. It should be reasonably slow in novice. Okay. I mean, for example, if this were an open round, I'm, I'm not in shape to be doing this, but you might hear something that this fast. Observation: What is resolution of analysis? A is a resolution type. B is subpoint. Is definition all contextually defined? C is subpoint. Something like that. But the thing is, even though, even though that was faster than I was reading it. If you know, well, the A sub point is going to be telling me what kind of resolution, and you hear me say the word policy, that's the key word you need to hear. If you hear the word contextually defined, that's the key word you need to hear. The tricky part comes, and I must admit, I'm 
He's saying this on tape. Here, it's down for all eternity. I'm not particularly fond of speed. I think sometimes teams use speed to play gotcha, and they'll have some buried link, number six, that you weren't able to flow or didn't get to, and then all of a sudden in rebuttals, the most important thing in the universe is that drop some point C on item J, blah, blah, blah. It's craziness. And so you want to just make sure you're getting the core items, okay? And right now, you're novices. You're not going to have people spreading and going super fast. You want to get the gist of the arguments done. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, so when you're, when prime ministers will be giving their introduction mm -hmm. on that, will they be saying like sub point A? Was yes, and yes. That specific and you, defining everything. Yes, and okay. if you are a prime minister, you should be doing that too. Okay. Okay. Argument templates and structure and organization are really important in Parley because it gets complicated and you need to be able to have the judge know where you are on the flow, where you are on the flow, and how these arguments map out across time. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Well, you've been a wonderful audience. Um, I'm assuming, wait a minute, that's, right, that's 11 o'clock, so I'm um, just about out of time. I think the next session goes off at 11.15, and it will be in this building. So if you do have a question or two, um, I can let you get to that next one on time, but uh, we do have a little bit. By the way, since we do have a teeny bit of time here, how did you all do on your flows? How did they, how did they come out? Not well, you know what? You gotta start somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Gotta, okay, I was like, I was trying to. Like, I didn't know if I was gonna write down this, uh, like, this for example, and the reason like for like, example. Yeah, okay. Because I was trying to like, you know, I was just trying to get the main words down, like the plan, the funding, and all that. Like I was trying to get it. Right. And again, as you practice this more, you'll get more versed in it. One of the things I would look at. So, for example, his flow right here. This is, this is a good job of condensing it because he's going to be able to have subsequent speeches. When you look at your flow, you've got some, first off, your handwriting is all better than mine, so congratulations. 20 years of school grew in my handwriting. Um, but, but this is a little wide, and so try to get it more narrow because yeah, you're going to run out of pages over here for all the same like speeches. This, and I thought like that way it was big one. Yeah, so like that, you're going to want okay. narrow columns. And that's also one of the reasons you want narrow narrow points on your, on your pens rather than giant marker size things. All right, we all good?